Why don't Bitcoin treasury companies perfectly track the price of Bitcoin? And why do they sometimes underperform even though they are often described as amplified Bitcoin? For example, Bitcoin may hit a new all-time high, but a Bitcoin treasury company may still be trading below its prior peak. The reason is that these companies are not designed to mirror Bitcoin on a daily basis. If you want daily amplified tracking, there are 2x Bitcoin ETFs, such as BITX, that aim to do exactly that. Those products offer very tight short-term correlation, but because of volatility decay, they tend to be poor long-term investments. Bitcoin treasury companies are different. They are building intelligently leveraged long-duration Bitcoin positions. They take on long-duration low interest rate credit and use it to buy more Bitcoin, deliberately pairing long-duration liabilities with a long-duration asset. This strategy is measured in years or decades, not days, months, or even quarters. Michael Saylor's own shift from convertible notes to perpetual preferred equity illustrates this. Convertible notes with a five-year duration were good, but not optimally long enough for Bitcoin. A long-duration asset like Bitcoin demands even longer-duration financing. That is the time horizon being optimized for. Not next week, not next quarter, not even the next 12 months, but multiple years and decades. When people complain that these companies have not tracked Bitcoin perfectly or are down over a 12-month stretch, they are misunderstanding the model. With long-duration credit, Bitcoin treasury companies often trade at a premium or discount to their underlying Bitcoin net asset value, MNEF. That premium or discount can reflect expectations for future BTC yield, value derived from the underlying operating business, or broader sentiment toward leveraged Bitcoin exposure. If an investor buys stock when the MNAV premium is high, say at 3x, and that premium later compresses to 1x, they can underperform Bitcoin despite the underlying Bitcoin position being unchanged. The intelligently leveraged structure remains the same, but sentiment-driven premium compression can weigh on the results. Over the long run, if Bitcoin outperforms the fixed income liabilities and the MNAV valuation holds steady, these companies can outperform Bitcoin, and likely will. But buying them at a premium carries the risk of underperformance if that premium compresses, even when Bitcoin itself is rallying. The key is to recognize what these companies actually are. Not short-term trading vehicles, but long-duration, intelligently leveraged Bitcoin positions. If you believe Bitcoin will outperform fixed income over the coming years and decades, then this model can be extremely compelling. But expecting short-term tick-for-tick correlation with Bitcoin is a fundamental misunderstanding of how they work. Thanks for watching everyone and see you next time.